Samuel 31, 1 through 6. The Philistines fought against Israel, and the Israelite men fell from them. Many were killed on Mount Gib. Now, we see from the time of um, Samson and the time of the judges how that Israel fought the Philistines. It was a group of people that they had trouble with. We end up seeing how David, finally, when he's king, the Philistines are no longer a threat after him because Solomon, don't God deal with them? But we see how through Scripture that sometimes the Israelites win battle against the Philistines. Sometimes the Philistines win in battle against Israel. We see how the Philistines capture the Ark of the Covenant. We see how they Israel retains it. So there's a constant back and forth on this. Oftentimes the back and forth happens when Israel goes back and forth with God. So when they're going away from God, God allows the Philistines to defeat them. While the Philistines never served God, God used their evil to serve His purpose to draw Israel back to Him. At this point in time, Saul was king. And we see how Saul kind of drifted away from the Lord, which is why this battle defeat happened because they allow Saul's death to happen. We also see the same story in First Chronicles ten, one through six. And so the fact that it's recorded twice by two possibly two different people, it's significant. The king, the first king of Israel dies. A very significant moment. It um, takes the throne from Saul and his line, which is, which ended with Saul, and gives the throne to David. So it's a very significant point in Israel like history, which so it's recorded twice. Actually, it's the first story recorded in Chronicles. Before it, we just see a list of names and people, but this is the first narrative that is recorded in Chronicles. Verse 2, the Philistines overtook Saul and his sons and killed his sons, Jonathan, Abedab, and Meshullah. We see in um, later in Scripture how there was a son of Saul's who was club-footed and David took mercy on him. We also see there was somebody else that um, Abner, Saul's uncle, tried to put on the throne. But he was not capable as king, so David just took mercy on him and had Abner dealt with. David ended up having to... He, he was a king of Judah, but he had to... where he was from, but he ended up having to become and prove himself to the other tribes to become king and prove him for them to recognize him as king because the rest of them were still behind Paul. I mean Saul. Even though he is dead, they were behind his line and seeing that because he had a son, that that son should be in line for the throne. So David kind of, while Judah, where he was from, was behind him and the Lord was behind him, it took time. So it wasn't something immediate that happened right after this. When the battle intensified against Saul, the archers caught up with him and severely wounded him. So he was wounded up in the point where he wasn't going to make it. Eventually, the wear of what happened would have killed him. He possibly had it, most likely had arrows through him. I don't, it doesn't specify, but he was the point to where he wouldn't have been able to make it and survive through this. Also, it would have been likely he wouldn't have been able to defend himself either at this point. So somebody could have just went by and had honor in killing the Israelite king. Then Saul said to his armor bearer, Draw your sword and run through me with it, or these uncircumcised men will come and run me through and torture me. Now, it's very common at that time. We see it with 
others. We see it done with Samson, how Samson was a mighty warrior and they take him and blind him and put him on display. It was very much done in them times. Those that were in the high position among the people, the rulers, those leaders, to be kept as a mockery and to show the nation that they were from that they were more powerful because they put this leader in this place. So necessarily they wouldn't have immediately killed Saul, but more of put him on display, more of made him to where he was no longer a threat by whatever wounded him even more to where, but then putting him out and keeping him as a reminder for Israel. And Saul wasn't, wasn't wanting this to happen. Saul didn't want to be put on display for them. As Christians, we're going to be mocked because we're to display Christ. We're going to be attacked because we display Christ, possibly be attacked. It happens all over the world. People get attacked because they represent Christ. And it's just something we're going to have to deal with. The world's not going the world isn't with Christ because they don't have him. So they're going to reject what's with Christ, which is us as Christians. But by us sticking strong to him, it's our witness to the world so that they might come to him. But his armor bearer would not do it because he was terrified. Now we see how David was able would have been able at certain times he was close enough to where he could have killed Saul. The reason he didn't is because David knew that the Lord put Saul in that position and it's for the Lord to deal with taking him out. So perhaps his sword bearer has this fear on him that if he does this, then God's going to be against him. So he's unwilling to do this because of this. Because it wasn't something the Lord wanted done. So the Lord still had him as king. So the armor bearer wasn't going to touch the Lord. Which later we see a story of how somebody claims to kill Saul. And goes to David bragging about it, and David kills him, has him killed, because it wasn't for that man to take Saul out. It was the Lord's duty to remove the king. Then Saul took his own sword and fell on it. We see this in cultures where pride is a big issue. This was Saul's pride. The Lord would have dealt with it in a different way, but Saul would have been removed as king. But he fell on his sword so that nothing, he wouldn't have been a disgrace. When his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he also fell on his own sword and died with him. Now the armor's bearer responsibility was mainly to keep him alive. The armor bearer fell at his responsibility because he got hit by arrows. So we see maybe he may have been able been having got the blame for the king's death because he, his job was to stand in front of the king to make sure he didn't get hit and for him to get wounded enough, severely wounded meant that he wasn't doing his responsibility. So in part, the fact that Saul was that wounded was partially responsible to the armor bearer. The fact is the battle was so severe that Saul couldn't have been prevented from getting wounded. Because him being king would have been one of the main people they were going to attack. When his armor bearer, um, verse 6, so that day Saul died together with his three sons, armor bearer and all his men. Now, we see his three sons die. Don't mention how they died, but they died in the battle. So it pretty much does away with King Saul's line. 
which is God's plan because David was already anointed before this battle to be the next king. And we see how the leadership trends will trans change. We see how this king was no longer following after God, but God dealt with it and allowed it to take place. And David developed and had to be patient, and eventually he would gain the throne as God promised. Sometimes we see bad leadership, and we just got to trust God to handle it and get through it and trust in Him that His plan and His will will be done.